And one of the biggest losers of the campaign was, of course, polling. Almost all the pollsters, political insiders, and predictive models had Hillary Clinton strolling into the White House. All except one. The University of Southern California LA Times poll was the only major poll to see Trump win. The poll's final forecast showed Trump leading by a little more than three points, 46.8% to 43.6%. Joining us now to discuss the poll's innovative approach, or what worked at least, USC Center for Economic and Social Research Survey Director Jill Darling from LA. Jill, thank you so much for joining us. So what do you think was the major differentiator of your poll? Well, our poll is different from traditional polls in several ways, actually. Um, one is that we talk to the same panel of respondents throughout the campaign. Um, and that in, allows us to see actual change taking place among the group of people that we're talking to over time. Traditional polls uh, tend to talk to different people each time they do a poll. And as they're often telephone polls, they have to reach their uh, cohort of respondents by telephone, which is a whole different process than when we have a panel lined up and they know they're going to be responding each week. So that's really one of the major differences. Another big difference is in the way that we ask our questions. Um, a traditional poll asks kind of an up and down question, which is if the election were held today, would you vote for Clinton, Trump, or someone else? Um, the way we ask it is we have a probabilistic method. We ask them to give us a percentage from 0 to 100 of the likelihood that they will vote for each one of those candidates. And so what we end up with is an uh, interesting kind of um, measure of not only support for candidates, but also a level of support and a measure of uncertainty. So for an example of how this might play out is one week uh, we might ask somebody uh, that question and we'd find out they were a 100% Clinton supporter. And then maybe the Comey FBI emails break and we come back and we ask them the next week. And maybe they're now a 75% Clinton supporter. And if you have enough of those slides accumulating, you're going to see that in our charts um, starting to go down. If you ask the same voter if they are going to, if they were going to vote today, would they vote for Clinton, Trump, or someone else? They might still say Clinton, or they might at least say they're leaning towards Clinton. Right. So what we have is a way of kind of almost like a fever chart of seeing how people are feeling about the candidate. So and let's so you break can down. See that. Uh, let's break down some of the actual category: gender, race, age, because you saw some very interesting trends. Uh, across various categories, one of the most one of the deciding factors was white men who sat out in 2012 actually came out to vote. Uh, we've heard a lot about how 53 percent of white women voted for Trump. What are the trends that you saw? We absolutely did see that, and we found that um, that you know all of the same things that you're seeing in uh, in, in the exit polls and and others. And we don't have our um, our final numbers in yet. We still have one more step in our poll to get the actual vote from the folks that we talked to throughout the campaign season, which will give us an even closer look. But in terms of what people were saying as they were heading towards the polls, we definitely saw that uh, percentages of people who did not vote in 2012. Uh, higher percentages than uh, would have normally been expected definitely did come. And those categories are mainly lower educational levels, white, and more in the outside urban regions. So uh, last quick question, you know, your poll didn't get the popular vote right and in fact had Trump winning the popular vote. Obviously, uh, the rest of the polls were, <laughs> were very wrong in, in other ways. but. How do you plan to change your methodology in the future, and how do you think other polls should change their methodology in the future uh, to make sure that the, the country isn't so misled? Well, Quickly. one of the things that, that I, yeah, I think our, our poll actually has an ability to, since we don't use a likely voter model, um, we have everybody who, who um, is an eligible voter is in our poll, and we weight them by their own self-reported propensity to vote. So that way we are able to see if there is a surge among people who uh, might not have voted in the past. 